Welcome to this presentation using 21st century tools to catalog 18th century mans manuscript scores and imprints. I will be showing you how the confluence of funding, technology, and available staff enabled the catalog conversion of a large body of 18th and 19th century scores and imprints under the custodial care of the Moravian Music Foundation. The collections of the Moravian Music Foundation contains records for over 20,000 manuscripts and early imprints of vocal and instrumental music, sacred and secular music, music from the 16th through the 21st centuries. Not all music was written by Moravian composers, but it is all music which the Moravians used and enjoyed. These collections represent congregation collections, collegium musicum collections, and personal collections from Moravian settlements and individuals in America. The collections have been hidden to most of the world for about 275 years. With the exception of the Johannes Herbst collection, scholars and church musicians had to visit the archives in Bethlehem and Winston-Salem uh, in order to discover these collections. The story of the collections can be divided into six phases. Making the source, that is from 1735 to about 1850s. Storage in cupboards and cabinets, 1850s until about 1950s. Discovery, the 1930s through the 1970s. Cataloging, the 1970s, preservation, that is microfilm, and physical preservation in the 1990s, and online starting in 2004. It is a story with a host of players, church musicians, composers, copyists, church elders, librarians, archivists, musicologists, and hymnists. The project I'm working on is just the latest action taken with these collections. Plans for this project have been in the works for years, but it was not until a significant bequest was given to the foundation from the estate of Louise Nippert in Cincinnati that plans finally took flight. Catalog conversion was among the projects <clears throat> selected for funding. In 2014, there were changes to to technology used by libraries that made the project doable without breaking the bank on services and software. Also, the two major staff members were of an age, that is retirement age, that they were available to work on the project. Both David Bloom and I are librarians, musicians, members of the Moravian Church, and have been immersed in Moravian music for years. The goals were easy to articulate. Create an online catalog based on the card catalog and book catalogs without losing any information, including musical and cheapets. Find technology to accomplish the project in a way that can be maintained by a small staff and does not include servers. The subset of collections selected for conversion include the congregation collections, collections of the Collegia Musica in Bethlehem and Lidditz, Pennsylvania, and Salem in North Carolina, manuscript copy books and bound volumes of printed music from the early 19th century. Moravian Music Foundation collections are organized according to archival principles, but cataloged according to AACR2 and RDA rules. The care of the collections dates back starting 250 years, and collections have been in the custodial care since then. The bulk of music came from Moravian settlements in North Carolina and Pennsylvania, mostly the 1750s through the U.S. Civil War, but not the sheet music or chamber music or parlor music from about the 1860s on. Settlements are a part of a larger missionary global network beginning in 1735, which provided access to the musical life in Germany and opportunities for copying scores and parts. 
These collections include oratorios, cantatas, anthems, opera excerpts, symphonies, chamber music, and music for solo instruments such as piano, flute, or violin. Music was performed by the Collegia Musica in Bethlehem and Lidditz in Pennsylvania and Salem in North Carolina, plus church choirs, ensembles, and individual musicians. Finding aids have not yet been created to provide a context for these collections. You see here the variety of vendors and tools we have been using on this project. In a nutshell, we decided to employ a contract service, that is Backstage Library Works, to create bibliographic records for items in each collection according to detailed specifications. We enhanced those records to include copy-specific information and our local holdings records, including location of the preservation microfilms. We decided to extend our OCLC services to include a hosted catalog, WorldCat Discovery, as our online catalog. We call it GemeinCat, or the Catalog of the Gemeinde, or the community. We made a commitment to include our bibliographic records with musical and cheapets in the RISM online catalog. A portion of uh, our holdings were already included in RISM. We used YAML's plain and easy code with the help of the Verovio music encoding software to transfer musical and cheapets from the cards and book catalogs to our OCLC records. Mark Edit helped us modify our records in preparation for batch loading into the RISM OPAC. Let's take a look at some details in how we used each of these vendors or tools, starting with Backstage Library Works. The collection titles and codes were pre-coordinated with OCLC. Each collection had specific instructions about data and examples of constant data values were identified. On the right side of the screen are some examples of that constant data, such as coding D for manuscripts or C for print music. We used the four-letter OCLC code um, in each record, the composition codes for symphonies or oratorios, etc., and we made sure that the parts were noted, instrumental and vocal parts, and what kind of score. We used field 506 for our restricted use statement. In field 555 is the place where we put a citation to the book catalogs. Field 561 was a good field for us in that it gave the provenance history to which we added the collection title and the shelf mark. And I'll talk more about that a little bit later. We also included the Moravia Music Foundation as curator, uh, a heading for the owning, the former owner, in this case, the Salem congregation, and also a title for each collection. Hosted services through OCLC are at the center of this project. When we started in 2014, some major parts of WorldCat Discovery were in development, which led us to take some actions on faith that the pieces would come together. One such example is the expansion of holdings records for general use. Another example is the feature that allows us to use WorldCat Discovery without a local system, that is, having our local data and holdings data in the, in the OCLC record instead of our local record. The products we used from OCLC include Record Manager, Connection for Batch Record Export, WorldCat Discovery as GemeinCat, our catalog, and Collection Manager for Digital Resources. WorldCat Discovery inter Interface improved with time. For example, they displayed the local holdings data. And Record Manager features improved with time. 
such as the implementation of loaded da local data records. Local holdings. Since status of an item is static at our institution, we had no need for a local system. We depend on the holding statement in GemeinCAT for the item location. Local data records. For imprints, we are able to add our local information in local data records and not create a duplicate OCLC record. WorldCAT discovery. Our local data and holdings are integrated into a common record when viewed through GemeinCAT. Electronic resources. Digital versions of, our, of reference works, most likely older reference works, and most importantly, links to RISM records, where our inchipits would show. Local bibliographic data. This may include notes written on various vocal or instrumental parts, documenting information that helps dating an item, our research policy, a source note, collection title, former owner, and curator. Let's take a closer look at local bibliographic records showing the type of information we included. You can see some are about notes on an item, on a manuscript part, or dating, uh, such as the fourth note, Moravian July uh, 11th, 1856, when this item was performed. Um, our research policy, a source, and of course our institutional names. The public display of locally, local bibliographic data integrates the data at the appropriate place in the public display. It is integrated with like fields. A closer look at this type of information shows that it is interspersed with other notes in the display. Local holding records facilitates display of collection and shelf location, but also includes more information about the item. This is a different way to use LHRs compared to serials holdings. Bef we started cataloging in Record Manager before local holdings records were available. We, that's where we used field 561 to carry the item location and it then displayed as a note. In our LHRs, we have three elements, item location, the policy, and the collection source. A closer look at this record shows the source, the policy, and the shelf location. The holdings data is nicely displayed to the public and includes a holding summary at the top and each um, LHR um, with its notes uh, displaying to the public. Moving along to how we are linking our records with the RISM OPAC. One of the important features in the RISM OPAC is the display of musical and cheapets, which do not display in WorldCat Local. OCLC recently provided more granularity in the definition of the 856 links, so now we code the link to RISM as more information, as you'll see on the example, which displays in the description port part of the WorldCat discovery records. We link, um, a link is created between OCLC and the RISM record using field 856. The musical and cheapets are included in field 031. And of course, these will display after our records are batch loaded into RISM. You can see uh, on the right side of the slide the link to the RISM musical in Cheapit, and below it what the in Cheapit looks like. Here is a closer look at that RISM record with the musical in Cheapit. Now let's take a look at musical in Cheapits, how they are created using uh, the Music Encoding Initiative software Verovio. It is interesting that this simple old code has found a new life. Verovio was created through the work of YAML in order to 
have an automated way of creating plain and easy code. Those who are older in this room probably remember plain and easy code when you had to manually code it. Well, now you can do it through a software uh, initiative. Plain and easy code was created in the 70s and can be used without a computer by anyone in the world. On the right side of the screen, here's an example. At the top is the source for cataloging, including the composer, the title, the musical and cheap it, the instrumentation, the key, the um, tempo marking, the number of measures, and if it's based on another source. The finished and cheap it's in RISM are given below in the example. This is Verovio. Let's take a look at how it works. It was created for RISM by the RISM office in Switzerland. Here's a close-up. You'll see at the top of the uh, slide, there are the note values and then the keyboard. Below that, pull-down menus for the um, clef, the key signature, the time signature, and as you play the Encheapit on the piano keyboard, the plain and easy code is generated at the bottom. Here's a more ex specific example. If I played this musical in Cheapit on the keyboard, um, and I put in the treble clef, one flat, and time signature of uh, two four time, Verovio would generate the plain and easy code, which I would then copy and paste into the example at the bottom of the page, field 031 in subfield P. This is an abbreviated, fast way of getting a plain and easy code. You have probably been wondering why it is so important to work with musical and cheapets. Well, in the RISM OPAC, you can search by musical notes by playing them on the little keyboard in the search um, area. You get a result of all the encheapets that match your input. We've been able to identify quite a number of mysterious manuscripts by searching musical encheapets in RISM. Moving along to the use of Mark Edit, we use Mark Edit to modify fields in OCLC Mark records to comply with the RISM mark specifications. We use mark, mark Edit to check for duplicate records and coding validation. And finally, we use Mark Edit to create a crosswalk between OCLC Mark to Mark 21 XML before batch loading into the RISM database called MuseCat. I've got some examples of the types of editing we do. For example, we copy the OCLC number to o, field 035. We transfer data from field 048 to 594 so that RISM staff can reconfigure the instrumentation codes. We create a holdings field in 852 according to RISM specifications. You can see that our RISM holdings for the Bethlehem office is in subfield A. Subfield P includes an abbreviation for the collection name, which is Bethlehem scores in the shelf location. We delete fields that are not compatible with RISM, such as the 650 FAST subject headings. We make sure that each record has fields 100, 240, and field 100 can be an editor, compiler, or even anonymous, which is not compatible with RDA. Uh, RISM uses artificial standardized titles if a proper uniform title is not constructed. By that I mean they use a generic term like songs or symphonies or quartets. Batch files are submitted to RISM in Mark 21 XML format. So we have a large file of bibliographic records that have musical and cheapets and have been modified for batch loading into RISM. In November 2016, RISM introduced MuseCat, the central cataloging program for RISM, and it is the master database. 
At the time of its release, the new MuseCat program contained over a million musical sources, over 108,000 authority records for personal names, over 73,000 institutions, and nearly 33,000 records for secondary literature. MuseCat Muse Cat includes sources from the various RISM series A1, A2, and B1, which are in one database for the first time after having been previously managed in separate places. MuseCat is a multilingual, open source, web-based, platform-independent program. It uses Mark 21 and has an internationally widespread and standardized data model at its core. Among additional features include the ability to leave comments or sources um, in authority files for the RISM editors. You can create folders to organize your work. You can link to the virtual international authority file to import personal name authority records. It has a custom-built module to display musical and cheapets. It has an integrated full online catalog search, which is identical to the search in the RISM OPAC. It has a separate training server for practice. It has interfaces in English, German, French, and Italian with translations in Spanish and Portuguese in preparation. These are some of the issues we encountered with batch loading into RISM. We're depending on batch loading into RISM for all of our records, and we hope to use MuseCat manually to make some corrections in the future. We downloaded one set of records from RISM, which were input by Harvard in about the 1980s. We enhanced these records and have reloaded them into MuseCat. We separate manuscript score records from printed score records. Manuscript score records are loaded and have single holdings, while records for printed scores may or may not match items in the RISM OPAC used by multiple institutions. This is the same issue that OCLC has with printed works. RISM staff is interested in matching our printed records with their print records and loading the musical in cheapets. For known matches, we provide them with a RISM ID in our records. MuseCat has more archival options for identifying personal names which are not available in RDA. I'd like to talk about some of the significant differences between RISM and OCLC Mark in its application. There is a balancing act between archival and library treatment, between uh, applying um, RISM guidelines in RDA or R AACR2 rules. There is also a balancing act between systems and their features in how data is presented and which data is presented. I'd like to give two examples. The first one on attributions of persons, which can be defined more clearly in RISM than in records according to RDA rules. And secondly, the need to maintain relationship of collection and individual parts of a collection. RISM's attributions for personal name. On the right-hand side of the slide, you'll see a source catalog record the cataloger determined that John Stafford Smith is the composer, and it was verified in the Sonic uh, catalog and in Wolf. Now this makes it an ascertained composer. On the left-hand side, you'll see uh, RISM's definitions for attributions for personal names, which are entered in subfield J of the 100 field. The example I've given you, ascertained, means that the name is partially present or entirely absent from the sorts, but attribution is reasonably certain and based on comparison with concordance sources, secondary literature, 
or other scholarly resources. This is what happens in most cases. Another option is conjectural, is a guess based on secondary evidence, such as secondary literature. Doubtful means authorship is in question. Alleged means the name is present on the source, but the attribution is questionable or doubtful. Misattributed means the name is on the source, but is incorrect. Host and constituent records or parent and child records generated from field 773 um, were frequently used in the um, Ravi Music Foundation collections to catalog a subunit such as one song in a collection or a movement of an oratorio, for example. Both systems gather and connect the parent and child record. And both systems make it possible to manage large collections that are intimately connected. And I'd like to show you how this is done. In, on the right side, in Record Manager, the child records are linked to the parent. In WorldCot Discovery, no indication that 152 child records are linked to this collection. Looking at a close-up, you see the, uh, the parent record for 152 sacred songs, and up in the left-hand corner, a link for displaying the parts, that is the 152 individual records. Here we've got a child's record for a particular uh, song, and in the upper left-hand corner you can see a link to the parent record. In the Rizimo pack, the parent and child look a little different. You see here the parent record, and it says contains, and then the list of 152 child records. And in this record, which is a child record, which is one one of the songs, at the bottom, it gives a link to the parent record, the whole collection. This would be a good time for uh, some questions, but we don't have a feedback me mechanism. So instead, I will summarize. We've met the goal of creating an online catalog based on the catalog cards and book catalogs without losing any information, not even the musical and cheapets. We found technology that can be maintained by a small staff and does not include servers. This project cost about $800,000, has two full-time catalogers, two part-time catalogers, and four part-time and cheapet writers. The project has been going on for three years and has a one-year extension with fewer staff. The 20 major collections, including um, over 21,400 records, are in the catalog already, and 15 minor collections will be converted in 2018. Loading our records into RISM is the slowest part of the project. This project was enabled by a confluence of available funding, technology, and staff. Thank you.